1.6 billion people, some of the world's poorest, depend on forest for their daily survival. The forest is their larder, their pharmacy, building materials, fuel depot, and food for their animals. Forests are a barrier against erosion, landslides, and avalanches. They keep rivers clean and slow the speed of the water during the monsoon or spring thaw, protecting against floods and the impact of climate change. And forests are carbon sinks, absorbing as much as a fifth of all carbon emissions caused by fossil fuels. But the world is losing forest areas the size of Greece every year. Illegal logging is part of the problem. The loggers buy off local chiefs or politicians and start clearing the forest. Other threats include legal but unsustainable logging, plantations for palm oil or soybeans or farming. The people that used to live in the forests rarely get to share the profits. Sometimes authorities try to solve the problem by fencing off the forest, forbidding people to use it. But that leaves the poorest with nothing. They lose their homes, food, fodder and fuel. But we can prevent deforestation and bring back the forests. The key is the local communities. Several studies show that when a forest community is given the right to manage the forest and the knowledge of how to preserve it and to make a living from it at the same time, both forests and communities thrive. This can only work if authorities, local, national and international, recognize the rights of the communities and pass laws that ensure that everybody should have their say and their share. In a growing number of countries, this is already working. Hillsides that were barren are now green again. Local people have learned how to manage the forest, and at the same time, old patterns are changing. In communities where women, ethnic minorities, and the most marginalized people did not have a say, they are now aware of their rights, and they voice their opinion. By giving rights to the poorest, we benefit all.